Hello everyone, in this video I will show you how to add OAuth to OpenID Connect with your Spring MVC application where you are using Spring Security. So as an OIDC provider, I am going to use Keyclock but you can use any other OpenID Connect provider like Google or Okta or GitHub or any other thing that it provides the OIDC. Alright, so let's start the application. So for that I am going to go to start on Spring.io, select Gradle project, use language Kotlin and change the group name. Everything else stays the same. Use the latest version of Spring Boot and add dependency web security OAuth2 and Simlay for view. Alright, with that, let's generate the project and open it up with your favorite IDE. I'm going to use IntelliJ IDEA, but you can use any other IDE of your choice. So first let's create uh, the simple application where we have two basic endpoint, public and private. So with help of Spring Security, we are going to secure this endpoint, but keep this endpoint open for all. So next let's add the Spring Security part. So this is basic Spring Security. You have already seen this in my previous video. This is basic Spring Security adapter where you just mention with this uh, configure method that uh, this URL is unauthenticated. Any other URL is authenticated. Next in the source main resources template folder, I have already created two HTML file. This public HTML. Uh, this is just basic HTML file nothing to explain over here and in a private uh, just simple private text uh, with a url for logout so it is a very basic uh, spring mvc application with a spring security now let's change the server port where we are going to run i'm changing it because i will run the key clock on 8080 so i'm changing it to 8082 next run the application So go to the browser and go to localhost port 8082 so as you can see the public endpoint works perfectly but if we go to the private endpoint we get 403 as expected so we have to log in here first to see this page so for login, uh, as mentioned, I'll be using key clock, download the key clock from here, uh, cd into key clock directory where you have extracted it, cd into bin, and run the standalone.sh. When it is running, go to localhost port 8080, and log into the admin console with your admin ID and password. Create a new realm called demo or whatever you like, and in there, create a client. Again, this is your choice, also. And in here, we're going to create some roles. Add another role. and get some users so i'm going to create admin user and set credential i'm going to add another user And in the role mapping, I'll select our client and add for test user. I'm going to add just the role user. And uh, for the admin user, I'm going to add both role admin and role user. Next, next, let's go back to our application. And to enable the OAuth 2, all we need to do is add this and 
and we need to add another bean which has the information about the uh, server we have provided over here so in here we are using this demo client so we need the information from here we need to change the access type to confidential and set our application url so our application url is 8082 so let's put that and set the base url to 8080 so finally save it and from here we need to get the credentials so let's get the credential and go to our application next and add the bean that has this server information so this represent our keyclock server information uh, as i mentioned previously if you are using other oauth2 um, open id connect provider then you will put uh, their information over here so this is the url uh, as you can see it's running on 8080 this is our client name as the client name and finally the credential we got from here we just need to put it over here all right and set the scope as open id so that's all we need for the basic OAuth to login now let's restart the application and uh, go to the browser go to this url uh, like previously this endpoint is open but if we go to the private endpoint we now see this login page that is coming from our key clock server so here we set our admin user and password and we should be able to see the private content now as i have mentioned i have added this logout link uh, but this link will show that we are logging out but we are actually did not we did not actually logged out so if you go back to this private endpoint again uh, you see without uh, putting the credential we are able to see this page now to add this logout functionality in our application we have to add a logout handler method in our application so let's add that So this is our logout handler uh, method where it's just uh, telling our application that we are going to use this OIDC client initiated logout success handler and if logout is successful we are going to the base URL in our case the base URL we have set in our key clock configuration over here so it will redirect to this place all right now to add this to the security config dot logout dot logout success handler and put this method that's it now let's restart the application application restarted now if we go to this url so we are still logged in but this time if we click log out then you can see we are redirected to this public and if we try to access the private endpoint we'll go back to this login page and definitely if we go put login information we'll be able to see the private endpoint so that's how you handle the logout next in our key clock application we have set the role uh, role to our specific user uh, now let's say uh, we want to create another endpoint where only admin can access it but not the regular tester can access it so let's say that this is the endpoint uh, private slash admin and only role admin user can access this endpoint and not the regular role user so to add this functionality we have to use this familiar pre-authorize and set the role admin to specify that only role admin can view this endpoint and in the security config we have to add this enable global method security 
So global method security added, but this role admin user uh, will not be able to see this page because we did not set this role admin that we got from our key clock to the security context. To, to add this security context and do like other uh, modification, advanced modification if you want, we have to use a custom user service. So let's see next how we can uh, customize the user service. So for that, we have to add a bean like this where we get the token uh, information from the user request and we can manipulate that user request to create uh, and customize our user so here we are setting up the authorities uh, as you can see this will get the authorities from this get role from token uh, so it will get the token and um, get the json uh, of the token body and from there it will get the roles so next let's create this method which will get the token and uh, from that token it will get the authorities and return this default ytc user with the token and user info so this is the method we are going to use to get the token and get roles from it so this token if we uh, see the payload from the token uh, we'll uh, convert it to map and then from that map we'll, map we'll see that inside the resource access and then the our application uh, client id that we are using in the key clock over here so this is our client id and uh, inside the our application we'll see the roles and uh, from the roles we'll get the role user and uh, role admin that we have defined over here and from there we'll just uh, map it to the simple granted authority and re uh, return it so now this uh, thing is okay and now we just have to add this custom user service to our OAuth to login so for that we have to use user info endpoint and from here you have to set OIDC user service to our OIDC user service and let's for clarity's sake let's try to print it out and let's restart the application All right, now let's go to the browser and try to first let's log out and uh, then go back to this private endpoint. So this time we can go and put our test user rather than the admin user. And we can see the private method. Now if we see into the console then we'll see inside this role we are seeing only this role user so role uh, as mentioned in our application role user should not access should not be able to access this endpoint so let's go to this endpoint on the browser and as expected we are getting 403 now let's go back to private and log out all right and let's go back to the private endpoint and this time let's log in with admin and as you can see in the console we get both role user and role admin and this time we should be able to access this slash admin endpoint let's, let's go there and as you can see we can go to this slash admin page with our admin uh, user who has the role admin role so that's all i wanted to show you in this video how we can uh, add this open id connect to uh, authorization method authentication and authorization method to your application uh, as mentioned previously uh, this bean can be configured with other oidc provider like google and uh, okta and uh, so the changes will be very minimal uh, most things are will be almost same so that's all uh, for this video i hope you liked it if you have any question feel free to ask in the comment below i will upload this code into github and post the link on the video description so thank you have a nice day bye bye